Hey, so we're here at the very quiet corner of Olive and 2nd Street. And it's always been a really quiet spot and today there's, not today, but in the near future, this will be open to be enjoyed by the neighborhood. It used to be a parking lot. And before that, it was a residential. There was probably maybe a hundred people that lived on this block at one time, I'm sure. This whole area used to be residential. And you can see now that it's pretty, uh, pretty dystopian. It was wiped off the face of the map. So this was a parking lot, which was supposed to be temporary when it opened. It finally came down. And this was under construction, kind of a miracle during the pandemic. This was the only sign of life in the entire neighborhood was this under construction 24 hours a day. Lots of parking. They always insist on having tons of parking up here. And that's because the people that come here from Orange County and the San Fernando Valley, they would much rather drive here. So Olive Street looks pretty good. All in all, it was a nice, nice improvement. Better than before. There's an awesome video that was filmed from a car from the 19, I think it was the 1940s. But it drives up, up and down a bunch of streets up here. So it looks like it's open for something, but they have a uh, security. At least yesterday I asked to go in and they said no. but it will be open soon. So this building is part of a really lengthy puzzle that started in 1948 with the Community Redevelopment Agency, the Bunker Hill Community Redevelopment Agency. And uh, there was a plan that was derived from, from the 110 freeway to 5th Street, to Hill Street, to Temple Street. Nuke whatever's there, irradiate it. with luxury brands. It is very clean up here. And it is, dare I say, magical to walk around here at night. It's fantastic. It's absolutely spotlessly clean. And with this building being complete, it's going to be just that much more sterile and clean and sparkly. No, no opinion on that. I like, uh, I like old things and new things. But this building, I have to say, is maybe just a little underwhelming. It's tall, but it's not that tall. So you, it doesn't really stick out on the skyline. It would have been really cool to see this. It would have been really cool to see this, like, um, be a lot taller and maybe the materials be just like a little bit more high-end. But it doesn't get a total fail. I mean, it's, it is nice. So between the Brogue Museum, the Disney Concert Hall, the Music Center, Dorothy Chandler Pavilion, and Grand Park, this was all part of a, a very specific plan called the Grand Avenue Plan. And it was from 5th Street up to 1st Street. And that's where that part came from because they, uh, they had to commit to the LA, at the time, LA's noble purpose of including parkland in redevelopment 
projects. So Grand Park is the, it's the grandbaby of that one. And as early as 2000, actually much earlier, back into the 80s, they were dicking around with what to do with this area. And then it wasn't, wasn't until 2007 that they actually got down to like whatever, whatever palms were greased and whatever, uh, however business got done back then. So these buildings up here are pretty gorgeous, but they are, they're fake. They weren't created by anything real. It was all subsidized. And the pandemic just put kind of a nail in the coffin of these as realistic office spaces. So I don't know how they can afford to maintain it. All these buildings are pretty empty and pretty depressing but sparkly clean and quite nice. So we're gonna go this way because this is, I wanted to see the regional connector station that's gonna take you straight to, almost straight to the new grand project. We're gonna have access to, from Santa Monica to Long Beach, to Azusa, to where else, Boyle Heights is gonna connect right here. So this is the bridge that's gonna to connect to the station, which is over here. When it's done, you'll go over the bridge, but it's not complete. Looks like the street's gonna curve around. So it used to be if you went down Flower Street, you were kind of screwed. So this will give you a, a place to turn around. This is a really, really confusing place to drive too, because there's like, two or even three different levels of streets around here. It's crazy. So there's a the museum. And you cross over that bridge. Down these elevators. And then underground to a metro subway. And that would be nice if they, this whole area is has security everywhere. There's, everything's an on camera here. And there's security for days. Except here, I don't even know what this is. Is, if this is a, I know, it's a public street. Street below, street above. And the below street is just to get to the parking lots. So this was actually kind of the top of the hill here, but when you're up there, you feel like that's the top of the hill, but it's really a, a bridge overpass. Hey, and this is where they film commercials and com film <laughs> Amateur stuff. Yeah, this place is so creepy. I've been down here a million times, so I kind of know, I know the signs that something's good or bad, and right now it's okay. All right, we're back out from the underground. And we're back on Olive Street. So maybe thinking about doing a couple extra videos about just little odds and ends like these buildings 
this complex here. It's from the 1970s, and that was part of HUD and Richard Nixon. All kinds of weird history, but that ended up on Bunker Hill, along with a lot more. There's so much. There's so much here. It's it's really just a fun place to walk around if you're not really familiar with the history. But just know that it used to be a wealthy upper class neighborhood, and then it was a kind of a rundown neighborhood, place with boarding houses, all the. Uh, large houses were divided into boarding rooms and studio apartments and stuff like that. So there's all kinds of stuff up here and it's all gone. Oh no, Angel's flight is closed. And this is the more than likely going to be the last building project to be uh, under the Community Redevelopment Agency program of total destruction and annihilation. But Angel's Flight isn't going to go anywhere. But this plot of land should most certainly have stayed apart. All right, so that's it, it was a short one. So thank you very much.